In this problem, we are given the position of a particle, x, is equal to 2t cubed minus 15t squared plus 24t plus 4 meters. And we are asked to figure out the time when the velocity is equal to zero and the position in total distance we have traveled when our acceleration is equal to zero. Now this is different than what we've done before. Before we were given an expression for x and we were given some time. So we would need to figure out what my velocity was, we would need to figure out what my acceleration was, and for both of these expression, we would plug in some time. But now we don't know what the time is, we're told what this is, and we need to figure out what our time is. We, we're told what our acceleration is, and we need to figure out our, what our time is to plug into the equation. So we need to still start by figuring out an expression for velocity. And my velocity is going to be equal to, still it's the, the derivative of my position with respect to time. So this is equal to the derivative of this function, 2t cubed minus 15t squared plus 24t plus 4. And we take that derivative with respect to time. We will get this is equal to 6t squared minus 30t plus 24 and this is meters per second. So this is the expression I have for my velocity. Okay, now, so, so let's write this expression for velocity. My velocity is equal to 6t squared minus 30t plus 24. In order to solve this, I need to either know what my velocity is or what my time is, because I have two variables. And I'm told, that I want to solve this problem when my velocity is equal to zero. So I'm going to set velocity equal to zero, and I'm going to solve for what t is equal to. Now, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I see that all of these terms are divisible by 6. So I'm going to take a 6 out. I'll get a 1 here. I'll get a 5 here, and I'll get a 4 here. So let me rewrite that. This is equal to zero is equal to t squared minus 5t plus 4. Now, I'm going to solve this equation. For this equation, I'm going to get 0. And I'm going to FOIL or use the quadratic formula to solve for t. In this case, we can do this in our heads. We can say this is going to be t minus 4. And we're going to say this is equal to t minus 1. But this tells me that my time that my velocity is equal to zero happens at two spots. It happens when my time is four seconds and my time is equal to one second. Now we want to figure out the second part. We want to determine the position and total distance traveled when acceleration is equal to zero. So just like we just had an expression for velocity, we need to figure out an expression for acceleration and then figure out the time when acceleration is zero. So my acceleration is going to be equal to the derivative of the velocity, the change in velocity over the change in time. So the derivative of velocity with respect to time. This is going to be equal to, let's take this expression. So the derivative of 6t squared minus 30t plus 24 with respect to time. And this is equal to, okay, so this will be 12t minus 30. Now, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say my acceleration is equal to 12t minus 30. I need to solve for it when acceleration is equal to 0. So I'm going to put my acceleration is equal to 0. And now I'm going to have to solve for t then t is going to be equal to 30 over 12, and that's going to be equal to 2.5 seconds. So I know that at 2.5 seconds, my acceleration is equal to zero.
Now that we have a time when our acceleration is zero, we can plug it back into this equation and we can figure out what our position will be. In this case, we'll have x for time is equal to 2.5 will be equal to 2 times 2.5 cubed minus 15 times 2.5 squared plus 24 times 2.5 plus 4. And let's put that in our calculator. And we get a position of 1.5 meters. Now we can look at the total distance traveled. For the total distance traveled, we need a start point. So we'll start when t is equal to 0. When t is equal to 0, this is going to be starting. And we end when t is equal to 2.5, which is our acceleration. We have to be careful. And we need to look in more detail at any point of the velocity when the velocity is equal to zero that goes between zero and 2.5. In this case, we have time is equal to one second. What is happening is our velocity is equal to zero. So our velocity is going to be going in one direction, say it's going in the positive direction. It hits zero and then the velocity, the sign of the velocity is going to change from positive to minus. So we're going to be backtracking. So we need to count that position again. So let's, let's figure out what all of these distances are. So at x is equal to 0, we have x is equal to 2 times 0 cubed minus 15 times 0 squared plus 24 times 0, plus 4. We can tell that these terms are all going to go away. So when uh, this position, x is, will be equal to 4. When time is equal to 1, we'll have t1 cubed minus 15 1 squared plus 24 times 1 plus 4. So that will be 2 minus 15 plus 24 plus 4. So we're at a, a position of 15. And when time is equal to 2.5, we already looked at that. We already found that our position is 1.5 meters. So x will be equal to 1.5. Now what we need to do is graph this. Let's make a number line. And this number line is going to represent the position x that we're at, at some time t. Let's start at t is equal to 0. And at this point, we're at x is equal to 4. So let's just call this right here. t is equal to 0. x is equal to 4. Now at t is equal to 1, we're at x is equal to 15. So this is also, remember, in meters. So we're at 15 meters. So we're somewhere over here. t is equal to 1. x is equal to 15. Now let's go to the next one. When t is equal to 2.5, x is equal to a position of 1.5. So we're way back over here again. And this is not drawn to scale, but we're back over here. So now we have 2.5. And x is equal to 1.5. So that means our particle starts here and moves like this. Then at 1.5 seconds starts to move back this way until it gets to this position. So we need to sum up what this distance is and what this distance is. And that's the total distance traveled. So our total dis distance is going to be equal to, what is this? This is a distance of 15 minus 4. So that distance is 11. Plus, 
what's this distance? This is a distance of 15 minus 1.5. So that's plus 13.5. We don't care about negative distances. If you were going to subtract 1.5 from 15, you would take the absolute value. We're not moving negative distances. It's the total distance, so we're adding it together. And this total distance traveled now is going to be 11 plus 13.5 or this is going to be 24.5. Now you know how to work a problem if you're given an expression for a position in terms of time, and you're asked to figure out time to make a certain parameter such as a velocity or an acceleration true. And you also know how to go about finding the total distance that a particle will have traveled.